Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's Busiest Music Nerd. I hope you are doing well. And today it is time for another impossible genre quiz. Austin and I have assembled a bunch of genres, both real and fake. And our guest in today's episode has to guess uh, the real genres from the fake ones in a series of multiple choices. Today, our guest in the series is none other than music reviewer and reactor uh, himself, Mr. Brad Taste in Music. Brad, thank you for coming through. Yes, of course. Uh, I'm glad to be here. I'm Bradley. I got my own channel. I do tons of different music stuff, live streams and whatnot. And uh, yeah, I'm very honored to be here. And I'm excited to uh, show you my incredible, extensive genre knowledge today. Austin and I were particularly worried about uh, you coming on because we know that you're like, you know, a little terminally online, uh, very, very, very much a music nerd type yourself. Yeah. And we were sort of like, you know, kind of sweating, thinking he's he's going to pick up on some of these genres like in like instantaneously, either figure out the fake ones or pick out the real ones like right off the bat uh, pretty quickly. Are, are you thinking that's going to be the case? Uh, yeah. I mean, for me, I feel like, uh, at, at least with a lot of these genres, I've been sent in some absolutely ridiculous shit. Um, recently I was sent in an album. It, it was, uh, you might know this band, but it was a uh, discovery to me. It was, I sent my friends on fire. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. And it was Nintendo core and it yeah. was, uh, yeah, it was a lot, but I didn't know Nintendo core existed until then. I was like, oh, there yeah. you go, Nintendo Core. As as somebody who was uh you know well into underground music in the two thousands, you know during that scene, that MySpace era, I'm I'm very well aware of of some Nintendo Core. Just a quick question, because hmm. like I struggle with this. Is there anything actually like groundbreaking? in a great way that came out of the MySpace era. Yeah, no, I, I I think so. One of my favorite examples of this is um this really great synth punk band that's still active today named Poly6. MySpace, when they were kind of getting popular as kind of a music platform, they had this weird multi-state MySpace music tour going on where they were kind of taking some of the most popular artists that were on the platform at the time. And uh, even though they were very different genre wise, uh, they had them all kind of operating and performing on the same bill. Um, so whether they were rock artists or pop artists or whatever, they were all kind of like, you know, performing uh, one after the other. And one of those bands was actually Poly6. They came all the way over from Japan to uh, perform with some crappy, forgettable, you know, pop singers that nobody probably even remembers, uh, remembers at this point. But, um, you know, MySpace thought enough of them, even though they were a very weird and out there band to actually kind of like, you know, attach them to their brand. And I mean, in, in a way they kind of represented, you know, at least some of the music tastes and trends on the platform, even if uh, it's not necessarily something that we see as kind of a defining aesthetic trend or whatever in retrospect, when we, you know, um, think about MySpace. It's really interesting hearing this because I mean, of course you lived through this. And for me, like I was, I, I kind of look back at it and pretty much the majority of what people see from there now is essentially just the loudest, most annoying voices. And they do kind of forget that there was a lot of stuff that did come out then uh, that I feel like, yeah, certainly marked an era, like you're saying in the underground. But uh, it is really funny because a lot of the times people will, they will just send in broken side. I will have to listen to that crap all the time. And that's you know, once you hear enough of that or you get sent in enough and it's like, oh, yep, that's the MySpace stuff. You know, you start to just kind of make those associations. And I feel like it kind of wipes away a lot of the stuff that uh, was good that did come out of that era. We've digressed quite a bit. I think Austin's probably going to be cutting some of this out. So as I was asking you, do you feel like it's likely you're going to sniff these uh, fake genres out pretty quickly? So I did watch the the first episode of this when it came out. And yeah. I'd say I had a pretty good like sense of mm. the real uh, but there was definitely a couple in there. I think I remember like Egg Punk, for example, where I was just like, you know, I was a little stunted. But but for the most part, I feel like I've seen enough shit around the Internet to where I feel somewhat confident. But I feel like everyone's going to be a little bit more confident until they actually see the answers. So, you know, okay. we'll, we'll see. All right. Well, let's uh, get started. Your options here for question one are Vermont Blues, Birmingham Techno, Appalachian Singing Saw and Yoruba Chant. Whoa. Okay. Wow. This is, uh, I feel like I'm discovering a new language here. Jesus. <laughs> singing saw? Oh, man. Appalachian singing saw. Like, your real chant immediately is the first one that seems plausible as, you know, it, I'd say that it's the least syllables, you know, the least complex. Mm. Uh, Vermont blues also, you know, Vermont, it's a real place and blues is a real type of music. 
I would assume that some blues music has come from Vermont, um, but would it be enough blues music for it to be a genre? That's a that's a good question. Uh, Birmingham techno for some reason is just like that. That one I'm I don't know I don't know about that. I <laughs> shit man. Wow. Okay. It's already a curveball. I see you guys are not holding back with this. We're, we're really not. We decided to go completely like scorched earth. We're, we're, wow. we're really like being as merciless as possible. No, I appreciate that. You know, this, I'm really thinking. I hope you don't mind. I'm, uh, yeah, no, take, take, take your time to think. Take your time to think. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Here's what I'm guessing. I'm guessing that if you are trying to throw curveballs, I'm going to say Vermont blues is probably the most obvious. And if it was Vermont blues, I don't think there would be as complicated of options to go along with that. Uh, so I'm actually just going to eliminate that one. Yoruba chant is kind of, it's, it's, it's interesting. I can't really imagine what that would be, but at the same time, Appalachian singing saw. That one kind of seems absurd enough to maybe be it. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna guess Yoruba chant. That's that's kind of what I'm feeling. So you feel that Yoruba chant is most likely the real genre? Yes, that's that's how I feel. All right, you were actually wrong. It's it's Birmingham techno or Birmingham sound. Uh, it is a cold what? mechanical style of techno uh, with hypnotic tracks, typically lacking the harsher and noisier elements of later industrial techno. Kind of saw a peak in the late 90s. I will forward you a uh, an album page so you can uh, check some of the stuff out yourself. Oh, it is God. the uh, album Force and Form from uh, Surgeon, and you can you can get down with some uh, with some Birmingham uh, techno. Wow, Birmingham techno, jeez, it's amazing because that was the one I was like, I was like sure it wasn't that, but wow, Birmingham <laughs> techno, damn, okay, all right, all I right. see you. Hey, but that's just warming up. We're just warming up. We're right? just warming up. We're just warming just up. Warming you, up exactly. You, yeah. you, you, the goal still here is like three out of five at least. Well, let's, let's go, go for it. it. Next batch here coming up. Here we go. We're reading out the multiple choices. It is Cape Jazz, Hyper Exotica, Scottish Show Band, and Maximalism. Okay, I, I like these a little bit better. Uh, mm. Cape Jazz. That's like what, like Phantom of the Opera on on fucking. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Scottish show band. I like that. That actually sounds fun. Scottish show band. Damn. Okay. Might have to check that out afterwards, you know? Hyper Exotica. I want that to be real. Austin and I also like to think of these videos as, as also like an open invitation for anybody seeing these fake genres and thinking like, I could make that. Maybe I should like start making that genre myself. You know, it's like whatever the heck I think that might might sound like. As inspiring as Hyper Exotica is, I think I'll let someone else uh, take care of that one, you know, if that isn't real. Mm. And maximalism, man, I mean, if there's like minimalism exists, you know, like there's right. got to be a maximalism. I, I hear maximalist music all the time where I'm like, this sounds maximalist as hell, usually is an insult, but uh Huh, man. But, uh, you know, there, there, but there's a difference between a genre and a descriptor. Exactly. You know? so yeah. You got to think about that. You know, out of all of these, I'm going to have to go with the one that I'd actually want to see. And that's going to be uh, Scottish show band. Uh, I'm going to go with that. I'm locking that in. It's actually Cape jazz. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, what? it's a style of jazz music originating from Cape town, South Africa. So there you go. There's your Cape jazz. This is the first one that I think is disappointing. Cause I feel like the, the other three, I would love to see. So, you know, of course, you know, no, no shade to Cape jazz. I bet it's great. But like these other three need to exist. We're throwing you off so far. Let's see if uh, we can turn it around. Bradley. Bradley not I'm having a great time regardless. You know, if, if I get zero out of five, I feel like it'll be, uh, you know, I still have some stuff to check out. There's, there's no shame in it. Well, you know, the thing is, if you do get zero out of five, you can at least know, as I admitted earlier in the video, that Austin and I like really kind of went in here and we're like, we, we <laughs> cannot, we cannot just sort of be like, hey, you know what? Uh, is, is city pop a genre? Bradley knows that. <laughs> yeah. Bradley knows city pop is a genre. So, you know, we, we, we were really like kind of digging here and then kind of also cooking up some weird genre names with our, our brains, obviously. I'm impressed with these, the, the fake genres. I mean, they are just, they sound incredible, like <laughs> genuinely. You know, I'm, I'm listening to genres that even though there are albums attached to them, they feel fake all the time. So I feel like that's, that, <laughs> that's maybe inspiring it. All right. Here's a, here's your next batch, batch three, 32 bit 
RPO, anti-punk, and slow style. Well, if 32-bit exists, I'm guessing it's because like someone forgot to update Windows or something. <laughs> Made an album on it. That could possibly be a, a, a um, result, yeah. I mean, I know like there's like 64 or what, 8-bit? Other bits. I've never heard of 32-bit. RPO. Uh, RPO, what would that stand for? Or is it just huh? Hmm. anti-punk? That's... What is that? That's like saying large shrimp. <laughs> it's, um, it is a little bit. Yeah. No, it is. Yeah. Uh, and slow style instead of hard style. All right. Um, man. What the hell would RPO be? That's the one is like, you know, some of these I could be like, all right, anti-punk. Yeah. All right. But man, RPO. Is there like, I'm guessing you can't give a hint of what it would stand for. Yeah. I can't tell you what it would stand for. <laughs> Here's what I'm thinking. If it stood for something... I also believe maybe, just maybe it would be, you know, the acronym would be spelled out. So, mm. hmm. That's, that's a theory. <sighs> Slow style, man. We went to a steakhouse. That's what that reminds me of. Slow style. Like, <laughs> I feel like anti-punk would be like the most like post-modern bullshit way of saying we're like making pop music. <laughs> to basically say we hate punk <laughs> as a genre and style in general. Hmm. I, but I don't think anyone would take that seriously enough to even write that down hmm. as, a, as a genre. Oh, man. Slow style sounds vanilla. It sounds made up. And 32-bit sounds crazy enough to be real. I'm going to go with 32-bit. I'm going to go with 32-bit. I'm going with 32-bit. It's not 32-bit. Man. Is take, it RPO? Take one more whack. It would be RPO because I just there's no way it's the other two. So I know it's going to be wrong, but I'm, I'm accepting <laughs> that because I refuse to believe that slow style or anti-punk exists. It's, I would be okay being wrong. It's slow style. It's slow style. It's terrible. Or, or, or a lento via lento. Yes, yeah, slow style is a... Uh, uh, basically, it borrows from hardcore EDM aesthetics, but it adopts a slower BPM than than hard style. It's kind of like coming full circle. It goes it's like uh, John it, Cage it, style. It, go, it goes hard, hard and then it goes slow. I'll send you a record from a, a Virgin Maria, aka uh, oh, and aka uh, those artists um, uh, collaborated on. I think one of the more uh, popular records in the genre named Devil. Oh, Whoa, what the style. hell is this album cover? Slow, what the slow fuck? style uh, is a thing. Yes. <laughs> This album cover is the worst. What the hell did you send me? Oh, you can't even show that to the people watching at home. Oh, my God. No, we're not going to. No, it's not, it's not getting shown. You're logged in to rate your music already. Of course, you're already logged in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I, I I actually feel bad about this fourth batch. Hey, I, it's I, 25% chance, right? You know? Uh, no, it's, it's, my odds. it's true. It's true. It's true. But I, I, feel, I feel like this fourth batch here is especially fucked up. Okay. Here it is. Uh, batch number four. Zotor, Gribo, Delage, and Kika. Which of these genres is the real one? Anthony, what the hell is this? <laughs> I'm wow. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you know, we we we, huh. we couldn't we couldn't not go hard on you. I'm sorry. We, we were, it's, it's actually like kind of bullying in a way, honestly, I, I'll admit to that. Can I phone a friend? Uh, <laughs> Tina. Do, do you have a friend who's like deep I, into I one friend. of these Would genres? You, you think you'll love this. Okay. Okay. So we're trying to find the fake genre here. We got Zotor, Rebo, <laughs> yeah, okay, and Kika. <laughs> You're trying to find the real genre. We're which is the, which, the which one one's the real, real one? Genre. One of these is real. Yeah, yeah one, one of those is genres real. is a real mm -hmm. genre on Rate Your Music with multiple albums uh, attributed. to And there's to multiple it. albums, too. Yeah. It's yeah. not just one album. It's, it's a genre. Okay, so yeah. it's not like someone just made one project and was like... I'm yeah, just there's call this Grebo. Look at, then, looking look, okay, okay, as as a bit of a as a bit of a hint here, it was based in the UK in the late 80s and early 90s. Um so yeah, it it was in fact uh, uh, a thing. And again, it's it's one of these four genres here. Which which is it? It could be Zotor, could be Grebo, could be a Delage, could be Kika. Tina says it's Zotor. Um which I mean, I would have eliminated it cuz the two Thoughts above the O. I, called Umla. Umla, oh, of course, yeah, yeah, those. You know what? I phoned a friend. I'm gonna have to go with her. She's she's very smart. She says Zotor. I would. I, I just want you to get all five of them wrong. No, <laughs> man.
like a million dollars on the line here. Yeah, a, a million, a million dollars. Yeah, million dollars. That's what he promised me. Yeah, you know that's what. Yeah, so it's true. Man, okay, but I'll say what if I was to guess, and it wasn't just hers, it would probably actually be either Gribo, uh, Gribo or. Well, Kika. now you gotta pick. I'm gonna go with Zotor. It's Gribo. It's Gribo. I would have guessed the goddamn it. It's Gribo. <laughs> God with damn uh, it. the top album in the genre being uh, Carter and the Unstoppable Sex Machines, uh, 101 Damnations. It, uh, again, was a short-lived English wow. subculture associated with raw, futuristic, uh, sample-heavy uh, dance music. It's kind of a, in reference to alternative dance, the alternative dance stuff that they had over there at the time. Yeah, this Love looks it. very punk, this, this album cover. So, yeah, it, it is a pretty punk-looking uh, album cover. I mean, a, a lot of the alternative dance bands that were, uh, you know, operating at that time, you know, Primal Scream, so on and so forth, had, had uh, you know, punk affiliations or, you know, uh, aesthetics and artistic ideas adjacent to punk music. So it kind of makes sense. But yeah, Grebo. It's so weird, like, clicking on it and, like, that's... It's the first thing. It's like Grebo. I'm like, huh? I like, even <laughs> you explain it. I'm still like, huh? No, look, as we were kind of searching for these, even some of them ourselves were like, this is a thing. Even we ourselves were floored by some of what, you know, we've kind of like dug up in the process of doing these videos. Are you ready to potentially get one out of five? Are you ready, Brad? I am ready. Yeah. This is, this is the redemption arc right here. Okay. All right? uh, we're, we're, we're going to do it. Fingers crossed. Okay. Here's your last four. Here's your last okay. four. Country Politan. Electric gospel, installation music, and Afrowave. <laughs> installation music. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> installation music, Tina. You know when you're installing something. <laughs> yeah, of course. First one, honestly, the first one that pops out to me is Afrowave. Uh huh. I mean that one. I don't know. That sounds real to me, but electric gospel. Kind of sounds lit. I ain't gonna lie, electric gospel, that's sick. Country politan. You know, as real as Afro Wave sounds, I'm gonna go with electric gospel. I'm sticking with that. You're going with electric gospel. I'm going with electric gospel. Yeah. It's wrong. It's what wrong. is it? It's do you want to take one more whack? I swear to God, if it's installation music, if it is installation music, I'm not guessing it. I don't, I'm abstaining. It's Afro wave. Let it be installation music. I'd rather be wrong. It's it's countrypolitan. It's countrypolitan. Oh my God. <laughs> it's countrypolitan. It's it's a style of country music that kind of came out of the early '60s and the '70s that uh, started emphasizing and embracing more pop aesthetics over kind of the more rustic country sounds of the fifties and, you know, the very, very early sixties. So you're talking about a lot of country artists like Patsy Cline, uh, Glenn Campbell, Charlie Rich, who started making records that had more of a mainstream appeal as opposed to just kind of, you know, sounding like an old school country record. Dolly Parton made her uh, share of more country pop and country politan albums too. But yeah, country politan is a, uh, is very much a thing. I will, um, Pass the genre page for that your way as well, so you can get into some uh, Skeeter Davis and Katie Lang. Uh, zero for five, you know. Uh, zero hey, for listen, five. I'm okay with that. You know, I'm sure my audience is probably going to give me a hard time for that one for a while. <laughs> your audience um, is going to kill you. Yeah, but, but I, I, again, I, I will admit we went hard on you. We 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 <laughs> yeah. went extra like brutally hard on you and and look your audience may give you a hard time in the comments but i promise you if any of them were in the hot seat for this they, they would they would have had the same outcome they would they would have like prob probably they would have found a way to do worse than you they would have gotten negative one <laughs> negative two <laughs> negative it, it, yeah it wouldn't even been a zero it would have been a negative five hey well i'm still so happy to be here and again anthony you've been a, been a, a big inspiration to me and my channel and uh, it's amazing to uh, see you basically rocking through, pushing through the hate as always, you know, be Thank chin you. up. Thank you. Hey, you too. You have beefs going on that I'm not even involved in, like in, <laughs> in, in the greater music world. We, we have our own yeah. separate beefs that we're going through at any given time. So, you know, I, I give you props on, on those as well. Bradley or Brad Taste in Music, thank you again for coming through. Uh, we're going to link your channel down below so people, people can check it out, uh, you know, your videos and your streams themselves. Uh, anything else that you got coming down the pipe that you want to make people aware of before we head out? Uh, not really. I'm just kind of taking it one day at a time. Uh, whatever comes out. Oh, the, the Quedeca project's coming out. I'm going to oh, yeah. be re reviewing, uh, reacting, reviewing to that. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's about it. Check out my channel. Maybe you'll like what you see. All right. Thank you very much for coming on. And thank you guys for watching too. Over here next to my head, another video that you could check out, hit that up or a link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, 
impossible genre quiz forever. <laughs>